All right, uh, this chapter is about uh, stock valuation. So let me give you a few uh, examples on stock valuation. Now let's take a look at this uh, problem here. Uh, 9-1, DPS calculation. Uh, DPS stands for dividend per share. Uh, here's the problem. War Corporation just paid a dividend of $1.50 a share. Uh, so D0 is $1.50. The dividend is expected to grow 7% a year for the next three years, and then at 5% a year thereafter. What is the expected dividend per share for each of the next five years? Okay, so this is a, a relatively simple uh, problem. Let me show you how to solve this problem. Okay, here's a solution. Uh, we know that uh, the current dividend of D0 is $1.50. And we also know that the company will grow by 7% uh, in, in the next uh, three years. The company will grow by 7%, and then after that point, it will continue to grow uh, by 5%. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at D1. D1 is the dividend of time 1, right, in year 1. So it's equal to D0 times 1 plus G1, right? So basically, you know that it's going to grow by 7%. So D1 has to be 7% higher than D0, right? So it's uh, 1.5 times 1.07, and you get 1.6050. Okay, now D2. D2 is uh, basically D1 uh, times 1 plus G, right? Because D2 has to be 7% 7, 7 higher than D1. But then D1 is also 7% higher than D0. So you can uh, make your calculation this way. It's D0 times 1 plus G1 times 1 plus G2. But then G1 and G2 are the same, right? 7%. So you have 1.5 times 1.07 squared, and you get 1.7174. Okay, you continue to make this, uh, a similar calculation for D3. This time it's 1.5 times 1.07 cube, right? And you get 1.8376. Now, you have to be careful when you reach uh, D4, because uh, the growth rate is 7% only in the first three years, right? So in year four, it's going to change from 7% here to 5%. So D4 would be 1.5 times 1.07 cube times 1.05, right? Because now you know that G is not 7 anymore, G is 5, so you have to change from 7 to 5 in year four, right? And then in year five, uh, D5 has to be 5% higher than D4. So you follow this calculation here, 1.5 times 1.07 cube times 1.05 squared, and you get the following uh, dividend here. All right, so now you got the uh, DPS, or dividend per share, for the next five years. All right, let's take a look at the next uh, problem here, 9-3. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I mean 9-2, uh, 9-2, constant growth valuation. Uh, Thomas Brothers is expected to pay uh, 50 cents per share dividend at the end of the year. So D1 is equal to 50 cents. The dividend is expected to grow at a constant rate of 7% a year. The required rate of return on the stock is 15%. What is the stock's value per share? Okay, so this is a constant growth uh, valuation problem. All right, here's the solution. The solution is pretty uh, straightforward here. Uh, first of all, let's see what uh, information is available here. First of all, you know that the uh, dividend in year one or D1 is equal to 50 cents, right? This is given in the problem. Uh, the growth rate is 7%. The required rate of return is 15%. The question is, what is the stock price? Okay. 
Now you are familiar with this formula. The stock price at time zero is equal to dividend at time one divided by the difference between the required rate of return, RS, and the growth rate here. Okay. Now you have to be very, very careful because before you can apply this model, you have to make sure that uh, the company is growing constantly. Okay, so it has to be growing at a particular uh, growth rate indefinitely. Okay, okay, so G has to be constant. Another condition is that the required rate of return has to be greater than G because if the required rate of return is less than G, then you would have a negative uh, denominator. And because uh, the dividend here cannot be negative, then you're going to have a negative stock price, which doesn't make any sense. So you have to make sure that the required rate of return is greater than G. Okay, to summarize, there are two conditions that you have to satisfy before you can apply apply this uh, this equation. Uh, G has to be constant, that's the first condition, and RS has to be greater, greater than G. That's the second condition. All right, now, now if you ap apply this uh, equation to this problem, you can see that both conditions are satisfied because G is constant indefinitely, right? It, it will continue to grow by a certain percent forever. And 15 is greater than G, I'm sorry, 15 is greater than 7, so uh, the second condition is also satisfied. So you put all the numbers in here, 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.15 minus 0 0.7, and you get 6.25, right? So that's the answer. The stock price is $6.25 uh, $6 per share. All right, let's move on to the next problem here, number 10. Uh, here, valuation of a declining growth uh, stock, uh, Martel Mining Companies or reserves are being depleted, so its sales are falling. Also, its pit is getting deeper each year, so its costs are rising. As a result, the company's earnings and dividends are declining at the constant rate of 5% per year. If D0 is $5 and RS is 15%, what is the value of Martel Mining's stock? You can see that this problem is unique because most of the time, uh, uh, most companies grow over time, but this company is not growing. Not only is it not growing, it's contracting, it's getting smaller. Okay, so the question is, when you're dealing with a, a contracting or a declining company, uh, what do you do? Okay, here's a solution uh, for problem 10. Uh, you are familiar with this equation by now, right? Uh, P0 is equal to D1 divided by RS minus G. Now, uh, in this problem, you are not given uh, D1 directly but uh, you know D0, right? So it's uh, easy to go from D0 to D1 because uh, D1 has to be D0 times one plus G, right? Because it has to grow by uh, G. Now in this particular problem, this company is not growing. This company is actually getting smaller, right? Now before you can apply this equation, you have to make sure that uh, two conditions are satisfied. Uh, first of all, is G constant, okay? Uh, and you can see that G is constant, it's negative. It's negative, but it's constant. So this company is declining constantly, right? So G is actually constant. Uh, so it satisfies the first condition. The second condition is, is RS greater than G? And you say yes, because RS is 15% and G is minus five. So actually RS is uh, greater than G. So you can apply this uh, equation. So D0 is $5, uh, G is uh, minus 5%, so it's minus 0 0.05. And then you have RS minus G, right? G is negative here, so you, uh, uh, complete this uh, calculation and you get 23.75.
So the lesson of this problem is that even though the company is uh, declining, it still has some value here, and you can apply this model or this formula to a declining company. So when G is negative, uh, you can still apply this uh, model. All right, let's move on to the next problem here, 9-4, non-constant growth valuation. Hart Enterprises recently paid a dividend of $1.25, so this is D0. It expects to have non-constant growth of 20% for two years, followed by a constant rate of 5% thereafter. The firm's required return is 10%. A. How far away is the terminal or horizon date? B. What is the firm's horizon or terminal value? C. What is the firm's intrinsic value today? P0. Okay, let's take a look at this problem here. Uh, you know the current dividend, right? And you know that this company is going to grow by 20% uh, for the next two years. And then after that, it will grow by 5%. So this is something that you have not seen before because uh, up to this point you have seen only uh, a, a situation where G is constant, right? In this problem, G is not constant because you have uh, uh, you have very high G, a very high G, 20% in the first two years, and then uh, your G will change from 20% to 5%. So G is not constant. Okay. Now the question is, when you're dealing with a situation like this one, when G is not constant, what do you do? Okay, let me show you how to solve this problem. Okay, let's take a look at the solution here. The first uh, 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 question is, what is the terminal or horizon date? Well, first of all, you have to understand the meaning of the terminal or horizon date. Uh, basically, the terminal or horizon date is the date uh, after which G is constant. So when you reach the horizon date, then when you go beyond the horizon date, G, or the growth rate, will remain constant forever. Okay, so in this problem you can see that uh, the company will grow by 20% for the first two years, and then it will continue to grow by 5% uh, forever. So the terminal date on the terminal year is year number two. Okay, and then uh, you can draw a timeline, right? You know that G, uh, G1 from year zero to, to year one is 20%, G2 is 20%, and then G3, which is in the third year, is gonna be only uh, 5%, okay? So, uh, you know that D0 is 1.25, right? Uh, and you know that uh, in the first year, G is going to grow by 20%, so 1.25 will become 1.50 after one year, and then it will, it will become 1.8 in the second year, and then it will become 1.89 in the third year. Okay, so uh, in part B, the question is, what is the terminal value? What is the terminal value or horizon value? Basically, the terminal value or horizon value is the value of the stock at the terminal date, okay? And from uh, part A, we know that the terminal date is uh, uh, year number two, right? So what you have to do is you have to determine the value of the stock at this point here, the terminal year or horizon year, okay? So what you do is you find P2, or the stock price at, in year two, and you can apply this equation here. Okay. You can see that at this point you can apply this equation because after this point G will become constant, right? So after this point G will become constant. Before this point G doesn't, doesn't remain constant, you, so you cannot apply this equation from the beginning. What you have to do is you have to apply the equation at the horizon date because after this point uh, G will become constant. Right, so you know that the uh, well, you, you use P two, right? So if it's P two, the dividend has to be one year ahead, so it has to be D three, which is one point eight nine, divided by uh, R S, which is zero point one zero minus uh, zero point zero five, which is uh, G. 
So uh, from this equation, you can solve for the terminal value or horizon value. It turns out to be $37.80. OK, uh, the horizon or terminal value is the value at the horizon date of all dividends expected thereafter. In this problem, it is calculated as follows. And you apply this equation, and you get 37.8. All right, but you have to be careful because that's not the end of the uh, solution because the ultimate goal here is to find P0 or the current stock price, right? So, so far you got the stock price in year two, but that's not the ultimate answer, okay? So, part C, you have to find the, uh, the, uh, the current stock price or what we call the intrinsic value. So, the intrinsic value is calculated as a sum of the present value of all dividends during the supernormal growth period plus the present value of the terminal value. Okay, let me explain the meaning of supernormal, supernormal uh, growth. Uh, you can see that G, the growth rate, is very high in the beginning, right? Most companies, when they, uh, uh, in the beginning, they grow very fast. So this is what we call the supernormal growth period. And after uh, after a while, most companies will start to slow down. It will they, they will continue to grow, but not as fast. But in the beginning, they grow really fast. So we call this period the supernormal growth period. Using your financial calculator, enter the following inputs. So you know that CF0 is 0. CF1, which is the dividend in year 1, is 1.5. Dividend in year 2 is 1.8, right? And then, all the dividends that come after this point are included in the terminal value, which is the stock price in year two, and you get 37.8. So what, what you have to do is you have to add 1.8 to 37.8, and then you discount uh, uh, this, uh, you know, the total, discount the total back two periods, and you discount 1.5 back one period. Uh, you apply this, um, uh, discount rate, which is 10%, and you solve for the NPV, you get 34.09. Uh, this is the current stock price. Now, I understand this is a little complicated, and a lot of people may not be able to follow, but in the class, I will explain this uh, in more detail, and I will spend more time on this. So if you don't understand this, do not uh, do not panic because uh, we can we can take care of this later. I think it's not beyond your understanding. You may have to spend a little more time on this. All right. Then.